here we have a magnifying lamp that the jeweler, jeweler uses. Um, she replaced the bulb, still didn't work. So I opened up the control box, found the fuse was blown. So, <laughs> um, like a good backyard electrician, I used my pliers to shut out the fuse, and that blew the circuit. So there's somewhere a dead short on this board. Luckily, it's quite an easy board, um, single layered, so there's only tracks on the one side. Um, when testing across where the live and the neutral comes in, let me see if you can see this here. Oh, whilst I put this, as I where the live and the neutral comes in on this side and that side, you can see 0 0.1 ohm. So there's a dead short somewhere. What I saw here just at the start. There's four diodes and they are configured in bridge rectifying configuration. So that means those four diodes make the AC power coming in DC um, for the circuit to use. Um, what I'm going to check now is if and yeah, this, this big yellow cap is across the bridge, so that is just for to smooth out the ripple. Because when you when you go from AC sine wave, how must I make this? Let me just see if I can draw you. When you've got a, we've, AC looks like this. Okay, so voltage fluctuates the whole time. From the one side to the other side so one time the power goes in the live and the other other time it goes into the neutral now this in south africa we have 50 hertz that means this cycle from this point if i remember correctly to this point happens 50 times a second so that is quite quick but it changes over. Um, DC power is just a flat line, flat voltage line. This is time and this is voltage. It's whatever. It's Let's say it's 12 volt. It's 12 volt all the time. This one, let's say in South Africa we've got 220 volt. So the peak here is 220 and the peak here is 220. So it fluctuates all the way in between from 0 volt it goes up to 220 volt and it goes down to 0 again then on the other side it goes up to 220 and then goes back down to 0 where DC volt is a flat 12 volt or 5 volt or 24 volt or whatever all the time now if you put this wave into a bridge rectifier what happens is that it becomes something like this it uses it uses only one one side of the of the of the wave and it changes the other side to also be on this on this side so if you were, if you were to go on basically the voltage will go like this so it will still it's still going to go up from zero to a peak go down to zero but then instead of going to the other side it's going to go up again to that same voltage from zero, not on the other side of the line. So if you have two two wires, a red and a black, this will feed the power the whole time. It won't switch over to the black one like AC will. Now this is not very really smooth. I mean, if you can see, this is not nearly close to this. So what a capacitor does is a capacitor cuts out these valleys so you can have something like this let me just move this so if you put a capacitor on a bridge rectifier what happens is 
the start, I, I don't know, really. I assume it will go up from zero. And then it will smooth out. It will still not be perfect. But this is much closer to this than this. That's what the cap is there for. I'm going to take out these four diodes and test each of them. And then I will see if that is maybe the problem. Otherwise, it's further down the board. So I remove the diodes. Let's see if you can see this. There's some diodes. Diode is basically like a, if you think in water terms, it's like a one way valve. It just is throw flows through the one way, but not the other way. Now, you will see there's a band on the one side gray or white band, I don't know where. Let's see if you can get close up. You see the gray band. Now that is the negative side of the cathode. So if we were to set our voltmeter, you can do it on ohm as well if you don't have a diode or bell test, you can put it on ohm. I'll show you both ways test it. So let's first go on the diode side or the bell tester. Now I'm putting this down. Actually I must go like this, should I know? With the little band on the left hand side, I'm gonna do it with all four of them. Bands on the left hand side. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is, we're going to take our negative lead and put it on the negative side, the positive lead on the positive side. And there you hear it goes through. Okay. If you reverse this, no current should flow through it. And yet it does. So this diode is damaged. Let's check this one. Negative, positive, goes through. Change it over, goes through, that diode is damaged. Negative, positive, nothing goes through, it should have. Turn it around, it shouldn't, but I mean, should have been some current going through, dead. Going through as it should, turn the leaves around, going through as it shouldn't. So all three, four of these diodes are damaged. If I were to put this on the ohm, what you can check for, let me just turn them the right way around again, or one of them. If you put the negative on the negative side and the positive there, you should see a reading of very close to zero ohms on your multimeter. If you turn it around, you should not get that reading, you should get this reading, zero. Because it's doesn't go through at all. So all four of these diodes are damaged. Now, a couple of months back, I had to check the UPS. I couldn't fix the UPS, so the guy said I can keep it. Now, this is the main board of the UPS. Now, I saw on here, it's Sunday afternoon. There's no shops open at the moment. So I'm going to try to get some spare parts off here. You can see there's a diode over there. There's another diode over there. There's another one over there. So I'm going to take these out and test them and see if we can use them in the circuit. So I'm going to do that quickly and I'll show you when I test them. Okay, so I found other diodes. Problem is just it's not exactly the same. The ones that was in there is 1N4007. I found two of them. I need four. What I did find was 1N4937. Um, it seems like there's not much difference between them. This is for the data I got from them. The 4007S and the 439, 4397S. It's a bit different. The voltage is 1000 to 600, 700 to 420, 1000 to 600. The amperage are about the same. So I'm going to try see if they will work on there. Let me just quickly show you how to when, when you test a diode and the diode is correct. Um, 
I've got the little gray stripe on the left hand side here so I'm going to put the negative on that and then positive there and through on the other side oops on the other side it does not go through now, yeah that's how you know they are correct so I'm going to solder them in and then I'll, I'll hopefully show you positive results so I got all the dots back in place um, I had to do some modification here on that of course I blew the circuit I had to bridge it over to the diodes the incoming so now we must just see if this works I mean there's always a possibility that something else down the line damaged the diodes that's why there was a short circuit <clears throat> So the possibility is if we plug this in, switch it on and bridge the, the fuse, it's just going to blow again. But let's see. Plugged in. I know the switch is on. So let's check. Voila. So it was a diode. This is excellent. Great. What I'm going to do, I've got a few of these fuses. I'm going to take this one out, check what size it is. Let me check it for you. I've got a few fuses here. I plug the light out again. This is a 5 amp, 5 amp fuse. So I just need to find a 5 amp fuse. Which I have here. So I'm just going to solder this old one out, put the new one in, pop your uncle. Thanks for watching.